Christmas from Braden Brook Benefice. Happy Christmas from everyone in Draycott Benefice. Happy Christmas, everyone, from Monsbury Abbey. Happy Christmas to one and all from the Upper Thames Group. Happy Christmas, everybody!
Well, happy Christmas and welcome to our online Christmas Day service for Numa, the North Wilts Mission Area. And it's great to have a chance to worship God together as we remember Christ's coming among us. And it all happened over two millennia ago. And yet the message of hope that comes from having God with us, Emmanuel, is as fresh and relevant today as it was then. It was lovely to have the pupils of Langley Fitzers Primary School back with us. Um, back in on Advent Sunday, they lit the first candle on the Advent wreath. And uh, today they lit the fifth and final candle. Later in the service, we've got a special guest appearance all the way from Malmesbury by Barney. And if you've got a Christmas present that you haven't opened yet, you might want to get it so that you can open it with Barney. Reverend Adam Beaumont from Goresbrook Group is bringing us our Bible reading and Brian Senior from the Bradenbrook Group is going to be speaking to us. And please join in with singing the carols, saying the prayers and doing the actions for our special Christmas action song. In a moment, we are going to see a retelling of the Christmas story from Bible Society. But first, let's come to God in prayer as we say sorry for the times that we've let him down. As we kneel with the shepherds before the newborn Christ child, we open our hearts in penitence and faith. You were born for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came as Saviour to bring wholeness and peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You come to bring light into the darkness of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It begins in Bethlehem, a nativity rhyme for Christmas time. A woman called Mary was doing her chores when an angel arrived, but not through the doors. He simply appeared, and she dropped to the floor. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. God is with me, she wondered. But what does that mean? What's this all about? Is it some kind of dream? The angel just smiled. Don't be scared. Please don't scream. God is happy with you and will bless you. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. You'll soon have a baby, the angel went on. A quite special baby called Jesus, God's son. The heir of King David, he'll sit on his throne and his kingdom will last forever. But how, Mary asked, I don't understand. I'm engaged to be wed, but he's not yet my man. Trust God, said the angel. He's got it all planned. His spirit will come upon you. All night Joseph tossed, all night Joseph turned. He just couldn't sleep, he'd only just learned that Mary was pregnant. What's more, she'd confirmed that the baby she bore was not his. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love's strong and deep. And her baby is God's own son. He's the answer to all that the prophets have said, so keep your engagement, be glad, and be wed. And when Joseph woke up, that's just what he did. He took Mary to be his wife. One hump, two humps. The star watchers watched the stars go by, looking for secrets in the sky. And then they saw a special star away in the west, away off far. A king's been born, that's what it means, Judea way, or so it seems. They climbed aboard their camely beasts and set off west from their homes back east. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers followed the star. At last their journey came to an end. They parked their camels in Jerusalem. Then they went to Herod, king of the nation, to ask him for some information. O oh, king, they asked. They were quite polite. 
Somewhere around here on this starry night, a brand new baby king abides. Can you tell us where this child resides? Star Watch's friends, King Herod smiled. In Bethlehem you'll find the child. Would you tell me where you find him, please? The exact address would put my mind at ease. Herod, of course, told them a lie. He'd already planned for the child to die. When he found the boy, that's what he'd do, so the Star Watchers left without a clue. The shining star led them to the place, a simple house, not some fancy space. And when they saw the little boy, they gave him a pile of special toys. Presents, rather, fit for a king. A bunch of shiny golden things, a spice called myrrh, a sort of perfume, while smelly frankincense filled the room. Then in the night, they had a dream that showed them Herod's evil scheme. So they never said where the boy's house lay, but went straight home by another way. One hump, two humps, a lumpity lump. The Star Watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, a lumpity lump. The Star Watchers followed the star. So what is the point of angels and shepherds and camels and stars, you say? Is it just a nice story to tell to the children to celebrate Christmas Day? It's not just a story. It's not just for kids. It's the hinge on which history swings. That Bethlehem baby grew into a man who challenged all powers and kings. He taught us that love is better than hate that serving beats being in charge. He showed us the value of each human life, the little as well as the large. And then on a cross, he died for us all, died to take all our wrongs away, and walked three days later right out of his tomb to turn death's dark night to day. And that is the good news the angels proclaimed, the heart of all Jesus would do, a new life for now, a new life forever. That's his Christmas present to you. Hello, Barney. Are you really excited about your Christmas presents? Shall we start opening them now then? Look! A lovely green Christmas ball. Shall we play with it? Barney, you're so good at catching. And throwing. Have you been practising? What have we got in here? Oh, look! Tasty treats! Can you have one now? Mm. I think we might wait till after dinner, Barney, because I don't want to spoil your appetite. But we could go in the garden and play with your ball. That would be fun, wouldn't it? It was over very quickly, yes. All that excitement, all that wait waiting around. And then we've opened our presents and now we're not sure what next. Well, do you know what, Barney? It's great to have presents. But one of the really good things about Christmas is that God offers us a present too. And the present God offers us, um, it doesn't come wrapped up. But the good thing about the present that God brings to us at Christmas is that it lasts with us forever. So your doggy treats will go quite quickly. And I expect we'll manage to lose your ball quite quickly, but God wants to offer us that we can be friends with him and that will last us forever. So that gives us a really happy Christmas, doesn't it, Barney? And that means we can all be really happy this Christmas. And Barney wants me to remind you that if you're coming to the Christmas Zoom after the service and you'd like to bring a present and unwrap it and show everybody, that would be really nice. So happy Christmas to everybody from Barney and me. Go tell it on the mountain, 
A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, 
full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. I don't know whether you sent a letter to Father Christmas this year. I did hear recently about a letter the famous detective Sherlock Holmes sent. It read like this. Dear Father Christmas, this Christmas, could you please send me a yellow door? Well, his assistant, Dr. Watson, thought this was rather strange. And so he asked him, why do you want a yellow door? And Sherlock Holmes answered, lemon entry, my dear Watson. It is nice to get stuff at Christmas, isn't it? Uh, Christmas is the time we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And one of Jesus' followers, John, tells us why it's worth celebrating. Matthew and Luke tell us the where and the when of Jesus' birth, the familiar events of the Christmas story. But John tells us the significance of Jesus' birth, the significance of the events we celebrate at Christmas. And to understand one part of it, we need to explore briefly the symbolism of darkness in the Bible. You see, right from the early parts of the Old Testament, we see the Hebrew word for darkness being used to describe misery, destruction, death, sorrow and evil. Darkness in the minds of the Jewish people was a picture of life apart from God. So, for example, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 19 says, The way of the wicked, that is the morally wrong or evil, is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. And when we read in Psalm 107 of God saving people from a life apart from him, we read he brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. So John picks up this theme and speaks of Jesus at Christmas as light entering darkness. And of darkness trying but failing to overcome that light. Here's John chapter 1 verse 5 in the message translation. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. Wow. This is a theme that John has picked up from Jesus himself. And it's a theme that runs throughout the Bible. You see, Jesus isn't just bringing people out of darkness into light. He is the light. He is God in humanity. When Jesus talks about himself as the light of the world, he's outside in the full blaze of the sun. Sunlight so bright that we can't look directly at it. Sunlight we rely on every day for life itself. It enables all life and health. It enables us to see clearly what's around us. That's the picture Jesus uses. And John picks it up to explain that when Jesus is born... The life light of the cosmos blazes into the darkness. That's what Christians celebrate at Christmas. You know, the other night oh, we came in, it was dark. I switched on the light in the front room. <clears throat> well, that kicked off a big battle. A beam of light shot into the room but the darkness that was all in the room just grabbed it and they were fighting and punching and kicking each other uh, uh, for ages but the fi light finally won out none of that happened when light enters darkness there's no big battle there's no argument darkness is just not there if darkness is a picture of everything that's a result of humanity rejecting God 
our sin, our rebellion, if darkness is a picture of death, of suffering, of misery, of pain, then as Jesus enters this world, this darkness just isn't there anymore. We see in the Bible that wherever Jesus goes, darkness just isn't there. People who've died live. People who are blind can see. People who are crippled and lame and desperately ill are healed and leaping for joy. Light blazes into the darkness and the darkness can't overcome it. And that's a permanent truth. John in his last book, Revelation, says one day as we pass through death unharmed because of Jesus who lived our life and died our death. One day we will live forever in a world which is lit by the light of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 21 verse 23 says in that place there is no more death. There is no more pain. There is no more suffering. Let me suggest something to you, especially if you are sad or worried or depressed this Christmas. Ask Jesus right now to come and bring light into darkness. Open your heart and life. And let Jesus bring his life light into your life and ask for his life to touch the lives of those you love this Christmas day. Well, that's nice you say. That's interesting. Now, what about the turkey or the presents? But before your mind wanders too far, I just have one more thing to tell you. You see, Jesus talks about you and I as well. He says ordinary people like us who follow him are his light bearers in our world. And he tells us to shine. He uses pictures of lamps and candles to explain that our light comes from being lit. Lit up by the Holy Spirit and by the love of God in and working through us. There's a Chinese proverb that says, better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. You've probably heard that. The Bible says, God agrees. Better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. And the candles God chooses to light in the darkness this Christmas and throughout this year are you and I. He chooses people to shine for him, who want to see the darkness gone and Jesus shining, who want to see the life light blazing out of the darkness. Followers of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, are God's light in the darkness of our world. Jesus lights us up and calls us to shine. I heard many years ago of a little girl who was shivering her way along the street in one of our cities. She saw the lights of a church building were on and she heard music coming from inside. So she went and got warm as she listened. The minister's text was, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And at the end of the service, this little girl went up to the minister and said, Did, did you say... You are the light of the world. And the minister replied, no, Jesus is the light of the world and I am one of his lights. Well, the little girl looked at him for a moment and said, well, mister, I wish you'd come down and hang out in our part of the world because it's really dark down there. We celebrate Christmas because Jesus is God hanging out in our part of the world. And he calls us to do the same. This Christmas, let's invite Jesus to overcome the darkness in our lives and to light us up. 
whoever and wherever we are, with his spirit and love. Let's be light bringers this Christmas. Let's be God's light in dark places. Let's shine. So our service is nearly at an end and it's been great to worship together on Christmas Day. Thank you so much for being with us and thank you to everyone for their contributions. If you're watching us on Christmas morning, uh, you might like to join us uh, on a Zoom call at 11.30 with a cup of coffee or even a glass of champagne so we can uh, wish each other Happy Christmas 
in person. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our NUMA YouTube channel to visit our website and please do let me know if you'd like to go on our mailing list so that you can get early news of what's happening in the mission area and details of, how, of all those will be um, on screen at the end of the service. We're next going to worship together on Sunday 31st of January when Bishop Viv is going to be our guest speaker. In a moment, uh, Reverend Shirley Danby from Upper Thames is going to give us the Christmas blessing. But first of all, I want to say goodbye to the Reverend Alison Love from Draycott Benefice, who is with us for the last time as a member of the Mission Area. Alison has been our area dean um, and um, is about to make a move to a parish in another diocese. And Alison, we wish you well and we pray that God will bless you richly. Um, as you move to your new home and parish. Thank you for all that you've done whilst you've been with us. So thank you again for joining us and I hope that you have a really happy and peaceful Christmas day wherever you are. A Christmas blessing. May the grace of God, star-forming creator, and the love of Jesus Christ born among us, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, opening hearts and lives to hope and joy, be with you all this Christmas day and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and those you love and pray for this Christmas, and remain with you always. Amen.